Welcome back. Uh, this time I'll be reviewing the second season of Freezing, Freezing Vibration. Stick around and enjoy. Alright, so Freezing Vibration was originally ran from October 2013 to December 2013. Um, it incorporates many of the things from the first season. Uh, most of the cast reprises a role, so you'll see most of them, like Satellizer and fucking Reyna. And of course, other people that were in the first season uh, have more uh, face time in this one, which is great, because, you know, it's amazing. Um, of course, we, we head to... We head to a fucking Alaska a secret base where they're trying to make uh, mass-produce Pandoras. They're calling them E-Pandoras. Um, that's basically the main focus of this season. Again, it's just like the first season. You won't really see the bad guys, which are the Novas, until the very end. But, you know, whatever. So, I'll, like always, I'm going to start with the characters and then give you a little bit more information as we go along. Um, first character we get, of course, is Satellizer L. Bridget, uh, reprising her role from the first season. Uh, she's more chill now than uh, she was in the first season. Uh, she's opened up more to uh, people and even uh, goes as far as making jokes, which is awesome. Of course, for some reason, the, the creator thought or the director thought of making her the main focus of this season, even though I clearly don't think she would... They could have gone a different way. She could have been a supporting character, but no. Because the show started off with her, they, she has to be the main fucking character. But whatever. Um, like I said, yeah, she's more chill. Uh, she actually gets closure from uh, a past the horrific event uh, that they show in the first season. That I've neglected, neglected to mention in the other review. Which is, you know, it's cool. I like seeing closure. Um... It's not bad, but like I said, I really, really didn't need to show that. It didn't need to include it. It felt more like a filler, really. But it, it was nice to see it. But overall, she's still hot as fuck, and she's still fucking kicking ass in this season. So that's always good to see. Cassie is the man of my destiny, not yours! What foul trickery have you pulled, Satellizer? Don't blame me and Kazuya. Rooms here are always assigned to partners who have shared combat experience. Dang. Surely you just, since you two have not even had a baptism yet! That makes no difference. We're assigned to be roommates because the higher-ups recognize what you can't. Kazuya and I happen to share a bond. Alright, so like I said, a lot of characters reprise their role. Rana Lynchin is no exception. She also heads to Alaska with Satellizer and Aoi, Kazo Aoi. Um, she's actually known more than Satellizer for some reason due to the 10th Nova Clash. I don't know why, which is basically what happened in the last season, uh, the last part of it. Um, she's a little bit more annoying than she was in the first season, always going around yelling and shit, as you'll see in the clip coming up. But, um, she actually is a supporting character. I am confident you will take the brass ring and proclaim victory over your this isn't a game, you know. It's interesting you should say that. Because you're not even taking this seriously. I can tell Alright, so we come to Chiffon Fairchild. One of my personal favorite characters of the entire seasons. Um, she, We finally find out what is uh, hiding behind her. You know, always smiling face. Which is pretty epic. I won't say what it is. Probably ruin the show for you. Um, we find out... Um, She's actually part of Chivalia, which is, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, it's part of the elite group when the Pandoras graduate, they join Chivalia. Uh, she's also known as one of the f one, one, one of the most powerful Pandoras alive. Um, she's part of this, whatever they call it, the top five Pandoras, which are the most powerful ones, with I think her being the most powerful. They're never really clear on that, but whatever. Uh, she's also very hot, and due to her Chevalier connections, she will upheld, upheld any order given to her. That's all I'm going to say. Well, that's too bad. And here I thought that I had already shown you such special favor. Very well, then. I'll stop you since that's what you want me to do. 
But unfortunately, the smile on my face isn't going anywhere. I mean, after all, I don't think I'll even need to get serious. It shouldn't be too difficult to defeat all of them. All right, Elizabeth Mabley also came out in the first season, reprising her role again. She's ranked three in the West genetics. Uh, not really world rank in the you know, world ranks. But on she, if anything, I feel like she was the main character of the show. We find out a lot about her. She comes from a rich family, born into the Mabley, fa Mabley family, which makes most of the world's uh, uses and accessories and shit like that. Um, probably the most cool and uh, cool character of all, and, and um, different than uh, what I thought she was in the first season. Uh, we find out that her she was raised to believe that those who with power are supposed to protect the weak or those without power, which is actually very noble. And uh, I guess they call that noblege oblige or something like that. But yeah. Ever since I was a little girl, my father instilled in me a sense of what's called noblesse oblige. My noblesse oblige. <laughs> That's exactly why I'm going to do this. It's my duty, Andre. All right, so many of the characters reprising the role for se from for season one is uh, Kathy Lockhart. Um, as you know, she she came out in the first season in uh, one of the last episodes, explaining how she didn't want to be uh, Pandora anymore. She wanted to write books, but towards the end, when she was saved, she changed her mind and decided to stay at Pandora. Well, she kept her word, and uh, <laughs> from my surprise, she's actually ranked in the top five world-renowned Pandoras. So that's fucking, you know, she is powerful, and I think her nickname was, you know, Godspeed of the East, due to the fact she goes to East Genetics, which I can't really know where it's located, but they do say many of the other genetics where they're located, so. You said you're world ranked and on my level. Your data is incorrect. According to my calculations, you do rank in the top five. However, it should be noted that you are dead last on that list. I'm really in last place. Guess I better do something about that then. And what better place to start than with you? Alright, so, of course, you know, satellizers there, this motherfucker's there, Kazuo Oe. Um, prizing his role from the first season, uh, has more confidence than he did. Um, seen as a glue that holds Catalyzer and his mind in place. He didn't really have to be here. And to be honest, this fool needs to learn how to fight. Yes, his Pandora does all the fighting, but Jesus, dude, learn how to fight. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Andre, now here's someone that needs to be here. He helped Elizabeth. He's her lim limiter. He actually was more popular, in my opinion. He was more popular than me than Kazu was. He was badass and he, you know, always stayed by her side no matter what. You've got to be kidding me. You think you're fighting for a cause that's greater than Ellie's? Well then. I'm going to prove why you're wrong. So some of the new characters in the show are like Roxanne Elipton. Um, from the genetics in America, she's also called the Immortal. Immortal. That's really it. Or a zombie. Referred to by another Pandora. Um, she's really fucking hot really speaks her mind for basically what an American is uh, viewed as around the world, which is not bad. Um, I don't really, we don't really get to see her fight in the show or see how powerful she is, um, but she does, you can see her training most of the time in the show. Uh, she likes having fun, and like I said, speaks her mind. She has really big tits. <laughs> um, but she is ranked in the top five, just like Chiffon and... Uh, fucking Kathy, so you know she's powerful, you know you don't want to mess around with her, especially with the name, the immortal or the zombie, you know, that's fucking, that's a big clue right there, but of course, like I said, we don't see her fight due to the fact that she does, in this season, most of the Pandoras turn against each other, and she doesn't want to fight against friends, or feels that's really unnecessary, you know, for her to do, which is, you know, I agree, so... I hate turning a blind eye in situations like this, but not nearly as much as I hate getting involved in other people's business. Here we have another character, um, Charles Bonaparte, 
uh, also ranked in the top five. She also has a nickname called the Young Tempest Phoenix. Um, well earned nickname, by my opinion. As you see her fighting the show a lot, she is fucking extremely fast. Uh, uses her headphones you see there as a sort of way to keep track of her many, um, what do you call it? Many different forms while she's fighting while doing Tempest turns and shit. Um, since she does more than eight, and that's really hard to control, apparently. Uh, overall, her father is Senator Spencer. She was founded when she was little, uh, out in the streets. Uh, he basically took her in, found out she was Pandora compatible, and, uh, basically raised her from there on out, out instilling his ideas. So she's a very committed soldier. Uh, she will not break any orders or go against them. Um... More than to that, um, of course, you by that you know that she will fight against any Pandora that refuses to follow any orders. I hope you didn't seriously think you'd won. Take my advice and give up already. Accept it, you lost. I'll do anything to help my father's e Pandora project succeed. And right, here we have another one of my favorites, Julia Moonberg. Um, she comes from West, uh, not from West Genetics, from Genetics in Germany. She also is known as a Maverick of Walpurgis. I don't know what that is. I'll look that up and put it in the thing. But overall, she's really strong. Uh, she uses two scythe flying fucking uh, Pandora weapons. We see that. And apparently they could go beyond Mach 3. That's pretty fucking fast. Uh, she also likes grabbing Kathy Lockhart's boobs in the entire show. That's what she's known for. <laughs> That's why I like her. Um, she's also very cold, though. Um, especially when it comes to things that she's not interested in. Uh, when we find out Elizabeth's been hurt, she just walks out the room. Uh, when a question about it, she says it does bores her. It's not interesting. And go straight for Kathy Lockhart's boobs, which is pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, it's very, very likable character. No, I can't take any more. The thought of you and me going at it in sweaty hand-to-hand -hand close quarters combat is getting me so hot, I think I'm gonna burst. Uh, how can you even think of that right now? Looking at your body, it's easy. How about a wager? Wait, what? Let's say the winner of this fight can do anything they want. <laughs> to the loser. Alright, so we have Holly Rose. Uh, Pandora, third year in uh, UK genetics. Um, they talk about her in the beginning of the show. Uh, a contender for the top five with Elizabeth also. Um, we don't see her till later on when, uh, you know, fucking Satellizer and fucking Kazuo go visit... Uh, Satellite's old home and find out that she's actually the Pandora to Satellite's younger brother, Louis. Um, she's fucked in the head because of the whole thing between Louis and Satellite, you know, the shit that happens. So she will fight for Louis, even knowing that she would never be as good as Satellite is for him. Um, but overall, she's actually very powerful. She uses a sword. Um, yeah, dude, she's contender for the top five. She has to be powerful. But like I said, she's fucked up in the head. Do you know how bad it felt being told that I'd never measure up to you? I've been living a lie this entire time. His eyes might have been on me, but his mind and his heart were always on you, big sister. Tell me! Why does it always have to be you? Uh, here we have Suna Lee, which uh, we find out she's one of the most powerful Pandoras and the most powerful active Pandora during the time of season two. Uh, she's a lieutenant hailing from Korea, and she's basically uh, Dr. Aoi's fucking personal bodyguard. She leads her own Pandora Chevalier fucking squad, and we see her a little bit in the show. The threat is directly in front of us. We may die here, so we might as well give it our all. Ready to follow my lead, Pandora? Yes! And of course, the show has E Pandoras. Here we have Amelia Evans, then Gina Purpleton, and the last one to be Rattle. Um, like I said, they're E Pandoras. The whole show is about them. They could have been the main cast, but whatever. Um, 
you know, they're basically normal girls who weren't compatible with the stigmata, and they were volunteered to be part of this program, the ePandora program, which basically makes all these girls mass-produce Pandoras. Yet, in the show, the thing was kind of a failure, and they started going crazy with experiments. These girls are always together, best friends. They uh, know everything about each other. And like I said, they should have been the main cast of the show. And I have no doubt we can achieve this if we all work together. Uh, uh, thank you, really. There is no need for you to thank us. We're all Pandora here. It's an honor to fight alongside someone as brave as you. Same here. What you did in that ring took some major league guts, girl. We'll go through these real quick. Here we have Howard L. Bridget, the main guy of the Bridget family. Then we have his wife, uh, I mean his wife, Olivia L. Bridget. And, of course, we have Violet L. Bridget, Satellizer's older sister, half-sister. And, of course, we have the asshole Louis L. Bridget, the one who, you know, molested her when growing up and stuff. Her younger brother. Um, he, like I said, he has his own Pandora in this show now. And here we have the main, I want to say the bad guy at all, but uh, he is seen as the bad guy in the show. Um, due to the fact of his beliefs, which I actually agree with him 100%, um, he... Basically, uh, he's just the obstacle they have to overcome. It's not really an obstacle, because what he speaks is the truth, as you'll hear coming up in the clip. Sometimes a villain is what the world needs. And if becoming a villain will save the lives of countless innocents, then it's a part I am more than happy to play. Only darkness can defeat darkness, Charles. You understand? Of course, Father. We have Scarlett O'Hara, the creator of the E Pandora. She watches over him. She's basically our mother to them, so they trust her. Uh, of course, she does betray that trust a couple times. That's being part of a scientist, as you'll see in the show. And she actually worked under Dr. Aoi, which uh, Dr. Aoi is actually the grandfather of Kazuo Aoi and his sister. Um, he's actually the founder and creator of Pandora. And he went over this with Scarlett O'Hara, how her work is a defiance against God, referring to many times the Tower of Babel, which uh, if you're not familiar with it, I'm a pretty interesting story. He kind of goes over it a little bit, really fast. But if, you know, you should check it out. Uh, a lot of anime incorporate that story. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. In response to the Tower of Babel, God dispensed divine punishment. He gave many languages to a world which previously only knew one. What are you trying to say? I think you know enough to connect the dots. Are you saying that what I'm doing is comparable to building the Tower of Babel? So, uh, Ticey comes out as well in the show. Really quick though, you all know she's a VP of West Genetics. The ending provides more of an opening for her to be a main character if they ever make a third season. Right, so let's get right into it. I thought this season was gonna we're gonna see a lot of Chevalier. We do see a couple of them, Chevalier MPs and shit. But I thought we were gonna see the most powerful beings on the planet. But whatever. Um, the show was still interesting though. Uh, the whole trying to see how E Pandora's compared to Pandora's, um, the rivalry there because it's like saying. Oh, uh, all of a sudden, you make a bunch of people, a bunch of special forces, like the special originals, are going to get pissed off. It's basically what happens here. Um, we'll also get a lot of different characters. It's very well done. I love new characters, especially when the characters are lovable like these are. They overshadow the, the original cast? Yes. Is that a bad thing? No. You don't have to force, you know, the original cast onto us. They, they, it'll be fine that they just make fucking, you know, cameo appearances here and there. It's just cool. You always want to go with further new cast, which this show delivers, but they kind of force feed you the original cast. Um, other than that, uh, there's a couple holes in the show that I want to talk about. Um, in the beginning, they fight a Pandora, which finds you find out that uh, it was created in the, you know, in fucking in this lab in Alaska, and you find out that it's almost as powerful as the original Pandora. So my question is, why not you use that to fight? Pen, uh, I mean, hold on, let me go back. Uh, Nova, Nova, that's what they create. A um, big giant Nova, and my question is, why don't they just use the giant Nova to fight Novas that appear? It seems to be as powerful as them, but whatever. Um, 
that's really my own biggest deal right there. But uh, yeah, overall the show delivers in uh, entertainment. I I love watching it. Uh, what happens at the end is fucking blows my mind. Uh, definitely, you know, open for another season and shit. Will they make it another season? I uh, hopefully they do, man. Come on, do it. Don't leave us hanging like this. Um, overall though, man, I'm gonna have to give the score of this anime a seven out of ten due to the fact, like I said, most of the holes in the show that I didn't like. They try to fucking make you love the original cast, even though the new cast that was introduced is very well done, very likable. I would, I would watch the show just with that cast, really. To be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do like that they closed the whole Satellizer story with her brother. That's good. I mean, I wanted that to be closed in the first season, but whatever. And I do like the E Pandoras. Uh, the idea actually, you know, built suspense and the drama throughout the show. Well done. But uh, yeah, stick around. Uh, you know, hit the like, subscribe. And I'll have more, you know, reviews out whenever I can. All right. Thanks for watching.